Happy weekend everyone. Back with another moth tutorial today. I've already cut it out. Sneak peek. That's all you can see before you see the tutorial. Um, I've really enjoyed doing this. It's a really, really pretty moth. And I did quite a bit of stitching on it. And I'm really happy with how it turned out. I hope you enjoy it. I'm back today with another moth and this is the one I've chosen. It's so beautiful. It's called a green carpet and it's a common moth. It's resident in Britain. It is found in any habitat. I'll show you from my other book the right the size of it. It is just this one here so that's it life size about an inch or less across. And before I actually go onwards with it I just want to dispel a little bit of thing about why they're called carpet moths. So they're not called carpet moths because the caterpillars feed on your carpets or your clothes. They're called carpet moths because when people, when the scientists were first identifying things back in the 18th century, that was the time when Persian carpets were coming over. Things were starting to be imported here in a big quantities. And the, the entomologists of the time thought that the beautiful patterns re resembled the intricate designs on the carpets that were coming in from Asia. And that's why they're called carpet moths. The pattern is called a carpet pattern. I decided you'd like to see the lovely green because I'm just trying, I'm trying to change people's minds about moths. I'm doing it on the same, uh, same beige linen that I did before. I've drawn out the shape that I want to do and I'm doing it about the same size as the brimstone. I decided there was no point in trying to do big or little ones. I'm showing off their colours and their beauty. So I'm going to attempt to do them around about the same size regardless of what they are in real life. So I've drawn the design. And I've actually cut out the piece that I want the wing to be. And I looked all over for fabric until I came across this. And this is a bit of old flannel that actually was painted up in various greens for a piece in my original stitch book. And so I think that I can get some, I can get appropriate colours out of this. So I think I'll just start that first. Maybe, because obviously I can do a lot with stitching. I think maybe that would make a good one. So I've got a bit of a dark bit there and then it goes pale. I'm going to try that for that wing and then I'll have to get a similar coloured piece. I've actually had two attempts at getting the colour. I've been gathering my threads. So I've got some out of my tangle. I've also got these which are bits of cotton and I think this emerald will be good, that's stranded cotton. These are both stranded cotton, both sort of shades of sort of a minty green and a pale green. And then I've got my trusty uh, pearl cotton, which I absolutely love, that's ever so slightly variegated. This is lovely. I'll be sad when this is running out because goodness knows where I got it from. I'm actually going to start with white in my needle. I'm just using a cruel needle. It's got a big eye and a sharp point. So the body is the same colour as the wings. Sort of the size I want. I've just got this little strip. I've doubled it over because I want to create some thickness. And I'm just going to come up under here. And I'll just go across. And I'll just pull it up. I quite like doing this just sculpture on the cloth, on the base cloth. I'll just fold those ends in and just use my white thread to stitch them down into the background. You can actually change the shape of something immediately just by using a few stitches. I feel that already I do have a head. Might be a bit big, I'll check with my little drawing. And there are... It is a bit white at the top. So I'm actually going to put some stitches down. Roll that edge under. I can sort of taper the body. I want that to be tight. I don't particularly want to cut the excess off because I want to actually have a solid body. I might need to cut the very tail end. 
Well, next thing really is to put the, the wings in place. Look at the colour of that for a moth. I mean, that's just gorgeous. I think I'll come up here, which is where this thoracic mark is, because there's another mark going outwards. And I'm just going to do some tiny little back stitches. I do like using this flannel. This was actually... I found this flannel at a wool show in the spring and it was a lady that just had lots of vintage sort of fabrics with her. I didn't really want to cut it up but I did get it with the express purpose of using it for embroidery and it's such a pleasure to stitch with. I just don't think they make a fabric like it anymore. You might be able to say I've drawn myself just with pencil a bit of a mark to show where I'm aiming for. I absolutely couldn't believe my eyes the first time I saw this moth for real. The colour is so bright. And it is when they're first, you know, sort of out of their chrysalis. Once they've been flying a few days, they actually fade quite a bit. But when they're fresh from their chrysalis and they're flying their first few nights, they're so vibrant, They're absolutely beautiful. I think I'm quite happy with this marking. And there's another, another quite a good bar. I think I'll make the mark first with backstitch and then decide to go the other way. And I like seeing your comments about the brimstone as well. Lots of people saying they didn't realise moths are going to be in such a lovely colour. Those of you in hotter countries, you'll have even more colourful ones, I imagine. But the UK is not bad on colour. I'm going over these to make the bar thicker. I think that's quite a good way that I've worked out to make the shape of the mark with the back stitch. And then it gives me something to work off to do these stitches that are in the direction of the, the scales of the wing. They definitely look better that way around, I think. They are the main shapes on here now so before i go back on there i think i'd quite like to get this one on so i'm just going to do the same marks on the other side and then i can work between them i've matched up both wings with the white and so now i have got this variegated blackish brown pearl cotton this one and so I'll start and put the pattern into here because I think I need to make some of this a bit more emerald but I just I would really like to get the pattern going first. So I'm going to start right up here at the head end and I just need to put this black line going here. I've got a feeling I might need to take the head out and do it again but I'm not going to do that yet. I'm going to get the rest of the moth done first. I'm actually just doing a little bit of stem stitch here which is going to come down over the shoulder there and right down to this white mark and then I was thinking about getting some fabric in here but actually I think I want to do it all with thread so I'm just going to make a little triangular mark here and I'll just get the shape of it first and then I can go back over it and sort of comes down into this middle bit here. And by the time it gets to the middle of the wing there's almost nothing there. I'm going to let these markings blend into the white ever so slightly. I don't particularly want a hard line. I 
bit of a skip over and then into this bit. With a bit of stem stitch right up towards the head and then actually across the bottom of the head. I think I'll do all of the black marks first. A little tiny black mark here. And then it's all underneath. So there's another big triangle, but this time it's underneath the white line instead of on top. Tiny triangle mark. A little bit of a broken line really, so I'm just, instead of doing one big stitch, I'll just take one or two little ones. And then there's a big patch here. In fact it joins up with this bit, so I'll do that on the way back across. Right the way down to join the other piece up. And then all the way back across. I'll work myself right back over to the edge. And there's no black mark here. So I'm just going to make one more on the edge of the wing there and skip down. So again this is quite a, a big black mark which I'll put the shape in so I can follow it once I come back along. Actually put some um, pale straw coloured stitches across the body so there'll be another feathery fringe across the bottom of here too. These are just straight stitches. Sorry, showing the fine line of the, the markings on the wing. It's too tiny to do individual stitches there, I think. It is actually quite a common little moth. I think the moth itself goes to things like rose bay willow herb and there is a beautiful mark on the end of each wing I'll just try and get that I need more white in here really this little marking going up here. And I'll just carry on some little crescenty blotches really. I think I can manage to just do two or three little straight stitches that'll represent the little white blotches that carry on along the bottom of the wing. I'll mirror the markings before I come back to finish this wing. I've mirrored the markings now and that's the main, the main things done. And now I just want to amend the colour and just make it a bit more vibrant. But the beginning of that is this straw colour, which is almost the colour of my linen. But uh, that's the one it is. And I'm just using one strand. A couple of stitches here and there, particularly down the edge of the wings. I think there's a few to go in. Maybe I should have used just a slightly more yellow colour to differentiate it from my background, but I'll just see how it goes. I definitely need the fringe here and it is this sort of a pale straw 
I'm going to do it quite loosely across and come in with a slightly different colour that will just give some variation. It is just straight stitches going from the background fabric onto the green of the wing. You can see I've laid some little black stitches in right along the edge because I hope that as I put these straw like ones over it would bring that little bit of depth as the tiny little bits showed through. I'd like to put some of the colour in on the wings and I'm going to start with this very nice emerald green. One strand again and I'm just going to start brightening the colour where I think it needs brightening. So definitely in here. I'm not particularly going to be satin stitching or anything. I'm just going to use as many stitches as I think it needs to just brighten the colour up. I'm going to go underneath this row of white marks. I'm being quite loose about these stitches because it's more of a mottling on the wing and I think by just doing different sizes of straight stitches that's how I can best achieve the same effect. I want the background fabric to be showing through still so really it's just wherever the needle comes up is fine and I'll just do a little stitch going upwards and we'll see how much difference it makes between the wings once I've amended the colours. I'll try and make sure that they're all lying in the same direction. I think I'll finish off that one. absolutely pouring down here. It's so dark. Even though the day's been getting ever so slightly longer by a couple of minutes a day. Oh, you wouldn't know it. You definitely wouldn't. If I look out of the window, all I can see is dark grey sky and the rain coming down. And I'm going to nip straight up to this area and put this green in this tiny little patch here. Because I've sort of got the markings and the colour is the colour is almost right, but I just like them to be as good as I can get them. I'm going to carry on with this emerald here and leave this pale. As I get over to it, I'll stop. Just been putting in some of these very pale green stitches just to show some variation. And I know up here, there's, I'm going to use that other minty green, I think. But I'm just going to show the furriness that comes, or the featheriness that comes up here around his shoulders. I'm not very happy with what I've done with the head actually. I might just take that back and do a little bit of a better job on it. I've changed to one strand of this minty green. You can see how much lighter I've gone again. And I just need to put some of this minty green up the side of here and then mainly around the shoulders because I think it'll make a difference. It's definitely making the highlight that I was hoping for. As if I need a different, not that straw colour, I need a different one. Maybe there's something in the tangle. 
too bright. That looks good. Let's see if I can find some more of that. Whatever that is. Maybe the tango comes to the rescue. Okay, that's the one. Single strand. So I'm going to I'm going to work my way along this wing with this more of a yellow ochre colour. Okay, so I'm going to come back down where I've put that very pale straw colour. And just do the odd couple of stitches that are going to help that be more noticeable. I'm just going to do the odd bit of horizontal stitching here and there because it'll all just help to make the effect in the end. Let's put these little not exactly highlights, but there's a definite colour variation there that I'm trying to get. And this, I think, is the colour that's doing it. And so now I'm going to try and do this little fringe again with this as the main colour. It is a bit darker than the actual fringe, but I think this one will show up better on my cream linen. And I've already got one, one layer of this colour and the odd little black spot. So I think all together should just about be perfect. So sometimes you just have to amend the colour because stitching obviously is not a photograph and it's not a painting but you, it all depends on also what your background cloth is so if I'd been stitching this on white this this pale straw colour would have shown up beautifully and that is the actual colour but because I'm stitching it onto a similar coloured background I'm just amending the colour of that and it's going to give the same effect. It's going to look right, but at least it's, it's going to show up. I'm just going onto the green flannel because it'll hold down that whole edge. Oh, I didn't realise I'd wandered off camera. It says, it's a, as I pull the whole thing nearer to me. I'll work up the body again with these and it'll help add depth to the, the hairs on the body. And work back down the other side, ready to do the fringe along the bottom. I think what I'll do, I'm just going to stop filming and finish this side and then I can come back with the head and the legs and the feelers. But there's a real good difference to be seen now between both the sides. So it'll look different again once I've done the emerald and the straw colour. I'm going to cut the head back because it's too big and the body's a little on the thick side, but I feel it's all right, but the head's definitely too thick. But I've finished mirroring the embroidery on the body, on the wings now, and I'm really happy with the way that's come out. So I'm actually just going to snip underneath all my stitches because the embroidery's now keeping everything down. And as long as I just snip the stitches, I can get this piece off or just amend it and cut it back. So I'm just, I'm going to get that done now. I've cut the excess material off, so now you can just see how my materials, just the two layers that I folded over. And it's going to do a bit of a point there, just the way that I've, I've just cut these corner bits off. Now, I'm going to start with the black and 
just stitch the front of the mouth parts on here because that'll keep that down. I don't particularly want to do a lot of stitching on this bit. I can definitely put them in. And then I can come down here and I can put the eye, the side of the eyes on. And I can just go through this and sculpt it in as I'm going. And I'm going to do the same over on the other side. I'm really pleased with the amended uh, head now. So I've moved my black thread to just above the eye because I want to put the feelers in. And the feelers are stripy. And I've got a bit of a cool way of doing them. So I'm going to pick up this um, straw thread, take it from here, and I'll just take it underneath and come up in the same place as the black one. And then I'm going to thread the black one through the needle as well. And I want to do, sometimes the, the feelers are actually held back over the top of the wings, but I'm going to do them to the side just so that they're more visible. But I am going to start from where they start from. So I'm going to do a tiny chain stitch. So I'm just going to pick up the first one here and I am only going to wrap around the black thread. So I'm going to separate my colours and wrap the black thread round. So I'm doing a black chain stitch like that. And when I pull everything through when I don't get a knot. The gold one will just come through and I'm left with a black chain stitch. So the next chain stitch I'm going to do, I'm going to do another tiny one and this time I'm just going to wrap the gold thread around the needle and not the black one. And pull through again. And I'm going to keep doing that. So I'm going to curve that down. So I might have to bring you a bit more close in. Because I'm trying to do the tiniest little stitches. So I'm ready for a black stitch. So I'm taking my chain stitch down. Tiny little stitch. Only the black thread is going around the needle. So sometimes you can just push your needle through. So I'll separate it so you can actually see. The black thread and the gold thread's not coming around the needle at all. I pull through and as the threads go through you'll have excess gold one that just gets pulled. And I've just made a black stitch. And I do that and I'm, I'm going to alternate them. Every time I take a tiny chain stitch I'll put the opposite colour round the needle. Like that. And this is, of, of all the lovely um, names it could be, it's just called Two Colour Chain Stitch. But it's a very cool effect. There's my gold one. And it means you don't have to go back over something. But you get this lovely checky effect. I'm back to a black one. Back around the needle and the gold ones behind. And you can just see the gold thread disappears in. Back to a gold one now. Gold around the needle, the black one stays behind. And just pull the black thread tight as I go. And this makes a lovely edging stitch. Um, or anywhere where you might just want this checkerboard effect. Yeah, I'm holding it better. I think I got in a muddle there with where the camera was. There it goes. And black next. 
or black chain stitch this time. And then a gold chain stitch. And then I'll take both of them down at the end. It's probably a bit thick as well, but it's fine. I'll finish that off and I'll do the same on the other side. I've taken my moth out of the hoop now and all I've done extra is I had did lighten it here because I thought it just needed a little bit of a lighter touch. Finished the feelers and I've put two forward facing legs on. But actually, really pleased with it. So the only thing left to do is do the name. I've got my bit of bonded fabric that I used to write the brimstone moth's name. So I'm just going to write on here. And this moth is just called Green Carpet. Doesn't have moth on the end like brimstone did. Green Carpet. I'm going to cut that out and just go over the writing again. And then if I take the bonding off the back, I can iron that directly onto my embroidery. So here's the green carpet moth finished. I've cut it out because I've sort of got an idea how I'm going to be putting them together. He's a real beauty. Well, I absolutely loved making that moth. You can see I've cut him out already because I feel as if I know what I'm going to do with these ones and so I'm happy to cut them off the cloth and keep them in little uh, pieces for now. And I hope you're enjoying seeing the moths come to life. I think maybe more people don't focus on moths because they, they look at butterflies instead. But the moths are so pretty and so beautiful and we have such bonny ones here in the UK and I'm sure everywhere else. Um, if you look for a moth trapping group near where you live, I'm sure that places, if you if you have conservation charities or nature reserves somewhere near where you live, they're bound to do some moth trapping and recording. And usually it's just free to go along to and you just go along and, and see what they find and you'll be amazed. Uh, thank you for all the comments you've been giving me. I've really been enjoying uh, reading them. And I'm hoping, hoping, hoping that the bird wall hanging will be done for next Sunday. So I'm, I think I'm going to be working on that this week. So that'll be good. And I will have the next week of the stitch journal on Wednesday. And I'm introducing a new stitch on Wednesday. So I hope you like that too. In the meantime, happy stitching. Um, keep watching, watch another video, send me the thumbs up thing and subscribe if you'd like to and with that I'm just going to say thank you very much for watching everybody, thanks for all your comments, all your suggestions that you come up with and just thank you very much and I will see you next time, bye from Marion's World, happy stitching!